Foreign direct investment has been the hardest hit of all the component economic variables ever since non-state actors scaled up their campaign against the Nigerian state. It started in the northeast with Boko Haram. However, with further demonstration of dissidents in the east and west of the country by those who feel progressively maligned by government, portfolio businessmen, especially from the developed economies of the world, have become few and far between. Joining us now to chew into this further is Ralph Liu, a lawyer and businessman. Welcome. Good to have you, Ralph. Now you Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, um, you probably have these figures, but I just want to throw them out so we have them as a basis for discussion. It says that um, Africa's biggest economy has been hit, which is us, uh, by 10.3 billion in 2020 as a result of insecurity, um, banditry attacks and so forth. How significant is it that comparatively or compared with maybe other countries, this is our um, Achilles heel? Thank you. Um, let me start by talking about this state of insecurity in Nigeria. Um, it has reached an alarming proportion that um, should get anyone worried. Um, from the position we have in the Northeast, the Boko Haram insurgency, banditry in the Northwest, um, farmers and herders clashes in the North Central to kidnapping and vandalism in the Southeast, as well as um, even courtism and kidnapping as well in the Southwest and ritual killings, other words in nation. Um, apparently this has a result of loss of lives and property. And of course the consequential um, impacts on the social economic life. Having said that, um, <clears throat> we all know what that can cost to us. Um, businesses are closing shop, multinationals are leaving the country. Of course, FDIs won't come into the country because of the fear of insecurity. So there's no point, I mean, no gain saying how terrible that will be an impact on our economy. The statistics out there are not favorable at all. Uh, things are going southwards and very bad for us as a nation. And so we're not surprised when, if, if you compare our position, even this time last year, it was a couple of years ago, and with the Committee of Nations, other nations that are part with us at some point away, long gone further because they are more secure than we are. And so it's right to say that things are not okay for us. And um, particularly compared with the economy that we have today and the, what it was in the past. All right, so you've just mentioned uh the FDI and the decrease in the foreign direct investment. But in your own opinion, how much has this situation affected the nation's economy? Oh, hugely. Um, so not only the economy, I would say, I've said, I said it earlier, the social economic impact of this on us is huge. It has also affected the polity, even our interpersonal lives. Not only that, the reputation of the country out there has been gravely impacted by this. Number one, I must say to you, um, <clears throat> apart from the psychological impact of this to us as a people, the first thing we we'll see is the disruption of economic activities in the country. And with this privacy insecurity, it comes um, internal displacement of people. People are not able to go about doing their daily activities or going to their businesses. And so that has led to decline in productivity in all facets of our Areas. Farmers can go to farm for fear of being attacked or being kidnapped for ransom. And that has, of course, led to um, poor production in food items and the resultant increase in the prices of food. Um, the figures that came out recently due to decline in productivity in that area um, has shown that um, the prices of food items have gone up so badly. And then um, and impacted the people. That's one area we, we, we know. Secondly, if you look at it, you will, you will see that um, there's a decimation of consumer confidence. One, because of the protracted insecurity, um, individuals find it difficult to want to spend more. Also, businesses don't want to invest. 
your, your, your guess is as good as mine as what that impact would be. We've spoken about the issue of um, FDIs dropping during the period. Um, the last time I checked, we had over almost $9 billion drop. Um, and it's been estimated that that would be in the quarter, at the end of the quarter, if nothing is done, we're going to continue to lose more money. Because um, the reports we're having um, about these attacks, of course, filter to and the international community and investors are watching. And as such, they're not confident about coming into the country. And so it has its impacts on us and our economy as a, uh, as a nation, if, if, if you ask me. Okay, well, clearly we're looking at a very bleak prognosis, but looking to solutions, do you think the government has done enough? Okay, so the first thing I would like to point out is that um, <clears throat> no government in the world will sit idly by and not um, tackle such because, of course, of the impact that we've discussed already. I know this government is doing a lot. Um, they're trying their best. Number one, I recall a time there was and the government tried to deal with the issue of um, illicit arms in circulation. And so they're doing as much as possible to um, get rid of those arms. Um, one thing I think they can continue to do, which I, I, I cited then, was um, trying to persuade people to see the reason why they can give up those arms and the unlicensed ones for, in particular. I also am aware that um, certain fighter jets have been acquired by the government. And we've been hearing recently of um, cases of wins and the pushback by the armed forces and um, against the attackers and the insurgents. That I think they're trying their best to do. Um, now, the efficiency of what they've done is another kettle of fish. There might have to be more to be done by them. Um, they, I also know they're trying to equip the armed forces as much as possible so they can um, successfully fight this war against um, our nation.